are looking at potential markets. And so these are huge ones that it's already losing um, at this point. So I think, I mean, uh, I think of it is, I'm sure it is rethinking its global strategy. Um, we've already seen it um, basically be quite aggressive in some of the more developing countries that China has good relationships with. Um, and so it is very possible in the end that there will be different 5G networks in different countries. Peter, I, I dare say there are other oldsters like me who are slightly resentful about the demise of the old uh, Nokia flip phone, but it is an astonishing kind of uh, rebirth, isn't it? For a, it's almost like they kind of went dark for a few years, built up this extraordinary end-to-end -end system, and come out punching. Well, Nokia's done this over and over again. I mean, they started out as a wood pulp company, and then they made tires and all kinds of different things over the years. If they have a corporate culture that is inclined to reinvent itself when given a challenge, and I think now they have an opening. But while we as enjoyed is the Chinese market, because the Chinese will source Chinese goods when they've got that option. And that has given them the, the opportunity to build up a lot of mass and R&D and so forth and make a very good product. Is, is, if, let me just get this to pick up on that point. Chinese purchases with Chinese products. Do, do, is, is that a perfect match? Is, is that a necessary match? Well, the thing is, it gives, if Nokia gets the American market and the, and, or the five eyes together, that's, it becomes a counterweight because then it has a home market that is not Finland. But I'll say this. And, you know, I don't, want my, I, I don't want my conservative friends throwing too many stones at me. But if Nokia comes to depend on the British-American Five Eyes market, it will be subject to political pressure, too. Not from Beijing, but from Washington and London. Right. I mean, the, the reality is when you make things that have strategic advantage, whether it's a Boeing or cell phone, you know, backbone system, you know, the, the, the network, uh, there are strategic uses for it, there are strategic vulnerabilities, and you're going to be hearing from the Pentagon and places like that. Lucille, pick up on Peter's point about uh, uh, the implications of preference uh, within China to buy Chinese. Is, is that necessarily the case? In which case, perfect, that's a massive market sorted. It's, uh, I guess it's what's available. I mean, we we see there's, you know, there's a whole section of the e-commerce giant hub out here that is just about products abroad. Um, we've seen China import huge amounts of infant formula because it, it doesn't trust the There's been problems in the past with domestic infant formula. I mean, I think... Um, and in a lot of these cases with the internet companies or um, there it's a lack of choice but I think given the choices I, I wouldn't say that uh, Chinese consumers always choose Chinese products so well, what realistically what is the prospect because because that was an intriguing part of, of that discussion and I don't know whether you, the, you it rang bells with you can Nokia kind of play the the game both ways can they expect to to keep up a good relationship as the ceo says we want to keep friends with china um i think uh, if if they're allowed to i think um I, I mean we see for example in finance which i cover foreign firms um in you know in equity and bond markets are maybe two to three percent not impossible for a foreign company to be here um, how much the market they have in the end I think big so. difference between yeah yeah and um, so I mean I think um, if yeah if I think you know it would mean a lot for China to allow I think Nokia also to uh, compete in this market and set an example in that regard mm -hmm. um, but I same. Well, there's a big difference between a company that lends money that's pretty easily replaceable and a company that can listen to what you're or look at what you are doing on the internet at this moment or that makes planes for your military. Uh, unfortunately and fortunately for Nokia, it is in a strategic industry. That is a big difference than banking. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks both. This is uh, Business Matters on the BBC. Let's stay in China now because... Uh, this week we've been hearing the latest economic figures for China. Some analysts take us slightly by surprise because they indicated that GDP was growing by a greater margin than some had anticipated in a range of sectors. And uh, 
How do you measure it? That's the key thing. A lot of people have said GDP figures can be false. GDP figures uh, can be analysed in different ways. Let's think of an innovative approach. Uh, Ying Yao Hu is Professor of Economics at Johns Hopkins. He's been investigating nighttime satellite imagery, looking at the amount of light coming from factories and offices, and he's been speaking to my colleague, Roger Hearing. We use this nighttime lights information from the uh, U.S. Air Force data from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. And we also use this official GDP data and then we consider each country, especially China's statistical capacity, so how accurate they can measure their economic activity based on World Bank statistics. And then we use this satellite information to combine this information and we come up with a pretty reliable estimate of China's GDP. Actually, we estimate the GDP for almost all the countries in the world. So China is one of them, which shows us a pretty big difference between the official GDP and our estimate. So your conclusion from this is that the official GDP figures don't reflect the economic activity in the same way that you managed to do from looking at the light. Yes, yes. So think about the case where you invest a lot of money to build an apartment building and then you try to rent it out. On paper, right, the GDP is recorded as your total investment, but in terms of economic activity, right, if you don't get lots of tenants from it, then actually the investment is on a very unproductive asset. What was your finding from this? Did you find that, in fact, the economy is smaller than it appeared from the figures? Yes. So basically, we found that, especially after the Great Recession, China's growth rate is much slower than the official number. You know, after the recession, you don't act. But from our number, actually, you can see that, that the growth rate is much smaller than the official number. So the Chinese economy is in a worse state than it appears to be from official figures? It's much slower than the official number. 2018 is about around 6.5. We actually estimate that a rough number is around like a 4.2%, which is much slower than the, uh, the official number, actually. Professor Yin Yao Hu from Johns Hopkins talking to Roger uh, on Wednesday. So you see, a bit bang, that is uh, <laughs> a bit of a punchline, isn't it? Like two thirds. Right. Um, so I mean, I think these these other types of indicators have been around for a while, right? So even uh, you know, Li Keqiang said in a problem that apparently he said this two years after, but that he used you know what was it, railway cargo, electricity, and loans as measures for GDP. Um, I think um, in terms of the figures this time, I still find that even given all the distrust um, about how the data is collected and how it's presented, um, it's still a figure that moves markets, still a figure that uh, people look at. Um, and I think this time, uh, I think the what people have been talking about is that although uh, GDP has increased, so has uh, credit and financing so far this year. And so, I mean, it's, it doesn't look like it's a it has been driven by a lot of credit. Um, and so I think uh, we're not expecting the same uh, next time around in, in the second quarter. Peter, it's not the first time satellite imagery has been used in this way. And I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to buy it as a, as a concept. No, it, it's not. We use it a lot uh, j just to look at, say, farm activity and uh, crop expectations and things like this. Trade is we use that kind of imagery to anticipate what's going to happen uh, in, with data that's not yet thrown. Well, so we have been estimating GDP in developing countries and places. You know, the GDP accounts in Britain and America and uh, France and other advanced